Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's talk about the Coulomb law. Now Coulomb's laws, of course, at this point, when you get to advanced CNM, you've seen it already at least several times, and you go, well, what's the big deal about Coulomb's law? But what's important is the notation, especially the vector notation, especially when the charge and the test charge are not placed at the origin or along the x or the y axis. For example, if we place the charge containing most of the charge at the origin and a test charge out here somewhere in the field in space, then you can see there's a vector, a radial vector that goes from the origin to the test charge and then to find the force acting on this test charge is simply equal to k, k of course defined by 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, times the product of the test charge times the charge caused in the electric field divided by the distance between them squared in the radial direction of this particular vector. Very straightforward. But what if we place the charge somewhere in space and the test charge some other place? Now we have two vectors. Let's call R sub A the vector that points to the large charge Q and R sub B the vector that points to the small test charge. Now we want to find the force acting on the small test charge based upon this charge right here. So it's all about defining this vector r here. So instead of having a vector going from the origin to the test charge, we now have a vector going from the large charge to the test charge. And how do we define that? Well, it turns out it is rb minus ra. And you look at that and go, well, why in the world would that be the case? Well, the best thing to do is this. We can say that the vector r is equal to the vector r sub b minus r sub a. And that can be written as the vector r, oop, r sub b, plus the negative vector r sub a. So what we can do here is we can add the negative vector of r sub a to r sub b because that's easier to see. Now let's do that. So if this is r a, then the negative r a is pointing in the opposite direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it over here and write this as negative r a vector. Now when you add r b to the negative r a, you get this vector right here. You get this vector right here, which of course is exactly the same as this vector right there. These two vectors are exactly the same. This is the r vector. And you can see then clearly that r vector is equal to r a, or I'm sorry, r b plus the negative of r a. And so that's why this equation here is justified. So to find the r vector, you, you take the vector to the test charge and subtract from that the vector to the charge that causes the electric field, rb minus ra, and then if you're going to define the Coulomb force at the test charge, it's equal to k times the product of the two charges divided by r squared, r being the length of this vector right here squared, times r unit vector and of course r unit vector is simply a small unit vector in the direction of the vector r and so you can see that it's all about notation and feeling comfortable about this kind of notation because we're going to be doing a lot more of this type of stuff so that you say okay now i understand how that works and now i understand why the r vector is equal to the difference between rb and ra and that is how it's done when we're dealing with Coulomb forces and Coulomb's law in three-dimensional space. Okay.